I'd like to invite to the stage to speak of these crossroads and to speak of, see, I always say that we discuss problems on television, and we discuss problems on two things. Either the time of the program is finished, or the break is finished, and we somehow never get down to the solution. So I like it when someone sort of highlights a problem and then tells us the way forward from that. So to speak away these crossroads that we seem to find ourselves at, and the way forward, I'd like to invite to the stage the chairman of Pathfinder Group, Mr. Ikramul Majid Segal, IA, sir. Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Honorable Governor, Governor, Dr. Ikshat Hussain, Mr. Ali Taba, Mr. Shraud Naziz, Mr. Arif Habib, and Ijaz Nassar. It is uh, sometimes not only a pleasure but a privilege to listen to fellow speakers who speak really not only uh, from the experience and knowledge but sincerely what they believe in. One thing which I've always been surprised about and I think um, Mr. Arif Habib in his uh, statistics showed that is that everybody says the economy is in trouble. So why is the banking sector giving windfall profits? Why is the cement sector giving windfall profits? Why is the textile sector giving windfall profits? Why is the steel sector giving windfall profits? In fact, I would like to know the sector which really is not profiting. The problem is the price hike. So you have an economy which is doing very well and you have a lot of people making a lot of profits. That is the institutions, the corporations. But you have the common man which is suffering because of a price hike. And that price hike is basically also important to note that most of it pertains to consumer items, mainly foodstuffs. But the problem is what the farmer produces and what he gets and what it is sold in the market and what the middleman gets is a wide difference. And unfortunately, the government has not been able to address that. Uh, do you know, I mean, people would not know this, but because they would find it very uh, this thing, but the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and then Hazrat Umar after him, they made two women, one after the other, police the markets to ensure quality and price. Very strange. Women who police the markets. Maybe we could have made sure they concentrated on policing the markets to make sure the exorbitant prices would not be reflected. What is Pakistan? Where is Pakistan? Today, we are going through the changing world order. The world order is being changed after Russia's uh, attack on Ukraine. Uh, there is no doubt that the world order will change. So we'll go back to the days of the Cold War, but with a difference. China was not a full participant of the Soviet Union at that time. Now it is a full participant. China has its own economic and military power. So, and the change is that the Baghdad Pact, which became the Cento, which became a shield for the Arab monarchies and their oil, that is reversed now. Pakistan, Iran, Turkey, in their own ways, are all on the bad books of the Western world. So you can say in a way that we are no more shield. And fortunately, fortunately for us, unlike the armies of Syria, Libya, to an extent Tunisia, Yemen, etc., the non-Arab Muslim armies, armed forces are intact today. Turkey, Iran, 
and Pakistan. And what is Pakistan? Today, Pakistan, part of the, of course, here, the hype of the China-Pakistan economic corridor. We forget that there was another corridor very much in existence, which was formed during the Centro Times, the Regional Cooperation of Development, the RCD, you heard of the RCD highway, which today, actually the train actually from Pakistan to Istanbul has actually working today. It just needs a little bit of improvement, and you have another corridor. And today, when the China-Russia corridor to Europe is under threat now because of the sanctions, etc. The China-Pakistan economic corridor connecting to the RCD corridor becomes the most important corridor in the world for trade. Now, all this is very good, but we have we are positioned well. We have we are positioned in a geopolitical, geoeconomic, whatever you may say. We are there part of South Asia, we are part of the Middle East, we are part of Central Asia, and of, of course our affinity with the China-Pakistan economic corridor. Almost uh, 50 years ago to the day, uh, 1970, I was flying a helicopter attached to the People's Liberation Army. The Chinese did not have helicopters at that time, so they needed helicopters in the Karakrams, when they were building the road, the uh, original Karakram highway. And uh, the gentleman who was my interpreter, one particularly harrowing day, a lot of people were injured because of, the ex because of uh, falling rocks and explosives and all that. And I asked him, I said, uh, and I was all at that time, maybe 24, 25 years old, and I asked him, I said, please explain to me, what are you getting out of so many Chinese being killed here? He says, this is a road to nowhere. I've been to Urumqi, I've been to Kashgar, there's nothing there. And what are you going to give to us from there? And what are we going to give to you? And he kept looking at him and he says, uh, there's a difference between you and us. He said, what? He says, we Chinese think in terms of 50, 100 years, you think in 5 and 10 years. We'll be down to Karachi. At that time, there was no question of Gwadar, so we'll be down to Karachi. My interpreter, actually, um, in, 19, in 2003, the same gentleman who came to me fresh from Beijing University, Mr. Zhang Jinglun, became the uh, Chinese ambassador uh, to Pakistan in 2003. And he, uh, he's still today a friend, we speak to other regularly, we telephone. He keeps asking me the same question. He says, who's stupid now? Mr. Sirajji is very well referred to it. We lost a great opportunity, tremendous opportunity. But we have time to revive it in the new world order which is coming. I won't talk about also political instability. And I want to talk about hypocrisy. Hypocrisy inherent in all of us. We know there are fake accounts. We know there is money laundering. We know that the biggest crooks in the world live around Hyde Park in London. And that's not only Pakistanis, Russian oligarchs and all that, etc. But really, we can go and say, what is FIA doing about it? What is NAB doing about it? What is the State Bank of Pakistan doing about it? What about the fake accounts that have been discovered? What about those banking officials who facilitated those fake accounts? What about the banking officials who facilitated money laundering? What about them? We are corporate here. We earn our money legitimately, legitimately. We do business and we earn money. We don't skim profits, skim, take out of corruption, etc. And let me say this to you, that without any of this thing, I saw corruption was number five in Mr. Arif Habib's list. Corruption is number one. You take corruption out, take the money out, and you won't have these people uh, living in, you know, in valuing in wealth 
while the poor people of Pakistan don't have water to drink and the food, yes. Now let me tell you again about roti kapra or makan. Just give me a minute. And the roti kapra or makan, of course, roti and kapra, Mehrgarh civilization onwards, this area, Indus Valley, has never been short of food and clothing. But what it has been short of is kapra, makan. And we have an opportunity makan. Now in the end, I will say this to you only, that look at those people in the Sindh house today. This is a reflection of our hypocrisy, the reflection of our corruption. Openly, openly, they're flouting an Article 63 of the Constitution, right? And I want to leave you with a prediction, and you can hold me to it. Imran Khan isn't going anywhere.